our brain responds to that's how our brain um responds to 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 uh anxiety and stress and for some however anxiety can go beyond those typical symptoms to negatively affect friendships family relationships and participation in extracurricular activities and all these symptoms combined can cause exhaustion and irritability in both adults and children. Anxiety takes a toll on our mental health, and at times it can make it difficult to either concentrate or process new information. The main reason for this is because individuals tend to focus on their intense worry or fear rather than focusing on other things. However, with proper help, and with the use of positive coping skills, anxiety can be managed. Anxiety doesn't just go away on its own. We must learn how to deal with the underlying causes. That's why it's important for us to, to know the common causes of anxiety so that we can learn how to manage um, our anxiety symptoms. So let's um, discuss how we can determine what is normal stress versus anxiety. You know, there's a fine line between stress and anxiety. Both are emotional responses, but stress is typically caused by an external trigger. Stress generally is a response to an external cause, such as um, taking a big test or arguing with a friend or, or family member. Stress usually goes away once the situation is resolved. Stress can be positive or negative. For example, it may inspire you to meet that deadline or to get that report completed, or it may cause you to, you know, lose endless amounts of sleep. Now, both stress and anxiety can affect your mind and body. You may experience symptoms such as excessive worry, uneasiness, tension, headache, or, or, or body pain. Uh, high blood pressure, you know, and or loss of sleep. Now, anxiety is generally internal, meaning it's your reaction to stress. Anxiety usually involves having a persistent feeling of apprehension or dread that doesn't go away and, and that interferes with how you live your life. It is constant and, and continuous, even if there is no immediate threat. An individual um, doesn't need a specific trigger for anxiety to appear. Anxiety can come and, and go um, in waves. Although anxiety can be managed, it takes a little bit more effort and, and um, patience to reduce anxiety levels. So, some, so since anxiety and stress share similar symptoms, they also share similar reactions um, to the body. Stress and anxiety can cause low energy, health issues, emotional distress, and so on. Low energy can stem from being mentally or emotionally drained by stress and anxiety. Health issues tend to arise um, with stress because when you are stressed, your blood pressure goes up and you may experience sleep issues which can lower your immune system. Anxiety can also lower your immune system and cause heart problems you know, due to the excessive worrying. And all of these reactions listed can affect your body physically, biologically, and emotionally. Stress can make you feel anxious, afraid, angry or, or aggressive, sad, irritable, frustrated, depressed. And these feelings can sometimes produce physical symptoms making you feel even worse. So let's look at how stress can affect your behavior. You know, if you're stressed, you may start to withdraw from other people or, or snap at them, be indecisive, have a hard time making decisions or, you know, become inflexible, unwilling to change or compromise. You may um, become tearful or, you know, have problems, um, again, getting to sleep or staying asleep. And stress can also affect you physically. You may experience headaches, um, nausea, indigestion, shallow breathing or hyperventilating, sweating, heart palpitations, 
You may get um, aches and pains, you know, throughout your body. If stress is long lasting, you may notice that, again, your sleep and memory are affected, your eating habits change, or you feel less motivated to, you know, exercise or go outside or engage in activities that, you know, you would normally find enjoy enjoyable. With anxiety, while some individuals express feelings of pervasive worry, others experience subtle emotional um, changes, such as, you know, feeling keyed up or feeling on edge constantly, being irritable, having difficulty concentrating, um, being restless, and, you know, unexplained out you know, of let's say crying or, or sadness or, or anger. Some social changes may occur with anxiety um, as well. Anxiety can negatively affect friendships and relationships. If a one social individual suddenly starts to avoid their favorite activities or, or stops making plans with friends and, and family, or starts to avoid social interactions, you know, that they used to have, you know, getting together with friends, avoids extracurricular activities, isolates from their peer group, or starts spending um, increased time alone, you know, this is something to, to take note of. Many of the physical complaints that, you know, do occur with anxiety can mimic regular complaints. So you want to pay attention to patterns. You know, a couple of headaches here and there shouldn't be a cause for concern, but frequent headaches um, are a red flag. You know, watch out for these common psychosomatic complaints, which, which can be associated with anxiety. You know, again, frequent headaches, you know, including migraines, uh, gastrointestinal problems. So, you know, issues, with, with your stomach, unexplained aches and pains, excessive fatigue, uh, complaints of not feeling well with no um, obvious medical cause, and changes in eating habits. You know, you also want to look out for sleep disturbances, such as difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, you know, maybe having frequent nightmares or not feeling refreshed after a sleep. And, you know, for, for children and adolescents, you know, poor schoolwork or performance, you know, can be a sign, given that anxiety can affect everything from sleep habits to eating habits to missing school or work due to physical issues. It should um, come to no surprise that poor academic or work performance um, can also result, um, result from untreated anxiety. Uh, school or work avoidance, missed days due to anxiety related illnesses and persistent worry can make it difficult for anxious individuals to keep up with their, their workload or, or case loads. So watch for these changes in, in your loved one or anyone that, that you know. Significant jumps in grades, you know, usually downwards for students, uh, frequently missing assignments. Um, describing or the person describing feeling overwhelmed, you know, by their workload. Uh, the person procrastinates, you know, um, or has difficulty concentrating on assignments more than usual. Now, I want to talk to you briefly about panic attacks. Um, you know, not all anxious individuals experience panic attacks, and, and some experience mild symptoms of panic um, without enduring a full full-blown panic attack. Now, the following symptoms can be common among people with anxiety disorders. Um, again, rapid heartbeat, sweating and trembling, dizziness, upset stomach, difficulty breathing, having chest pains, um, which is more um, associated with having a panic attack, Fe that feeling as if they're dying or that they're going crazy, you know, numbness or tingling in, in arms and legs, or, you know, a, a sense of um, derealization. So what happens when we feel stress? Stress and anxiety are more than just feelings. When we feel um, anxious, 
our minds and bodies go through a complex series of events, preparing us for the perceived threat. Underneath the feelings of stress and anxiety are many emotional, biological, and, and psychological responses. So how does this work? First, we witness or we experience a stimulus that our mind perceives as a threat. From there, our brain reacts by telling our bodies to release hormones, preparing us to fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Now, um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the fight and, and, and flight. However, the freeze or fawn reactions are just as common, and I will discuss those um, in more detail during the next slide. After the hormones are released, our body experiences or can experience, you know, dizziness, nausea, muscle tension, increase in heart rate. So while we might want to tell our mind, you know, ignore it, you're safe, you know, don't worry about it. The fact is, is that our bodies and brains have already reacted to this cycle, making anxiety and stress difficult to combat at this time. Now, as I mentioned, you know, once our brains perceive a threat, it tells our body to um, prepare to fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Sometimes we are not even aware that this reaction is happening. For example, a common um, um, flight response is perfectionism. You know, this idea that if I can just um, be perfect, I can escape whatever is stressing me out. Um, another good example, um, a, a common freeze response is an inability to make decisions. You know, many of these reactions go unnoticed or we tell ourselves that, you know, that it's just um, how we are when they are usually stress or anxiety responses. The fawn response is a little bit more confusing. You know, have you ever been um, unable to say no, you know, when asked to take on more expectations? You know, have you ever given a lot of time and attention to someone or something hoping that you'll get the same um, response back? You know, have you ever said, I, I feel like I'm, I'm walking on eggshells, so you don't set someone, um, someone or something off? You know, these are fond responses. When you bypass your own need um, or identity, also, it's important to mention that people usually experience all of these responses depending on the, the stimulus. People usually don't just, you know, fight or just fawn. It's sort of a combination and we go through this um, cycle as we're experiencing um, anxiety. So far, I've explained that we perceive a threat our brain tells us, um, tells our body to release hormones so we can fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, and then our bodies react accordingly. However, an another result of this um, perceived threat and, and flooding of hormones is that we get very stuck in our right hemisphere of our brain. You can see, you know, here with the um, illustration that the right um, hemisphere of our brain is the emotional. Um, part of our brain that deals with feelings. And this prevents us from being able to look at facts and, and think logically, which is a left brain skill. For example, if you are very stressed at work and unsure that you will meet an you know, important deadline, your brain is not able to take a step back and, and reason. You know, I have always turned um, things in on time, so I'm sure it will be okay. My or said that I can have more time, you know, if I need it. You know, I did this as a, a favor anyway. So it's okay if it's a little bit late. A balanced brain is a healthy brain. So I hope that I've been able to clearly articulate the complex cycles of stress and anxiety. The coping skills um, we will look at toward the end of this presentation are designed to do two things. One, to combat the physical symptoms we experience um, with anxiety and to shift us from the emotional um, right brain to help us get to the more logical left brain during that time. At this time, I just wanna stop and see if anyone has any questions.
Okay, so now that you have some context of, um, as to how anxiety presents and the process our bodies and minds go through, I want to emphasize how common you know, this actually is. As you can see, a little over 30% of students experience feelings of stress and anxiety, most of it stemming from um, school demands. Research also shows that the amount of stress and anxiety people feel has increased uh, dramatically after COVID-19. And this graph represents a study done by the Center of uh, Disease Control, the CDC. Along the bottom you know, of the graph, you can see that this study uh, began in August of 2020, and it extends through February of 2021. I want to draw your attention to the solid line that shows that at the highest point, around 40% of adults reported symptoms of anxiety or um, depressive disorder within that the past seven days. Right below that, on the dash line, we see that about 35% of adults experience anxiety symptoms sometime uh, within a, a period of seven days. So what can we take away from this? We know that stress and anxiety affects large amounts of the population and data shows that this has only increased since COVID-19. Now, before we go um, into what signs to look out for, I would like to talk a little bit about burnout. Now, burnout is a form of exhaustion caused by constantly feeling swamped or, or overwhelmed. Children can face um, a burnout when they are faced with an overwhelming amount of homework or responsibilities, while adults can face a uh, burnout from working, parenting, um, and, and, and lack of self-care. Signs of burnout include loss of motivation, feeling drained all the time, uh, regardless of how much sleep you get, feeling trapped or isolated. If you notice any of these symptoms in yourself, your children, a loved one, or a friend, it is highly recommended to find some time um, for relaxation and self-care. Uh, you know, not being able to engage in self-care can be extremely uh, damaging to um, your mental health or your child's mental health or, or, or loved one's mental health. So most of the time when we are feeling stressed or anxious, we try to do things that help calm us down. It is recommended that we do things that relax our bodies rather than um, things that distract us from our problems. Now, distraction is a thing that prevents someone from, from giving their full attention to something else, while relaxation is the state of being free from tension and anxiety. A lot of individuals will turn to social media or shows to help relieve stress, which isn't a bad thing, However, if you are watching shows or videos that are anxiety or stress inducing, when um, you are using distraction methods rather than, a then you're using distraction methods rather than a relaxation method. You know, in the moment, you are forgetting the thing that is causing your anxiety or stress. However, you know, since you are engaging in activities that are increasing these symptoms, then after you're done, you know, watching your show or, or your video, um, then more than likely you'll start worrying about your problems quickly after because your body wasn't, wasn't able to, to relax fully during that time. So in order for your body to relax, um, you need to utilize methods that reduce anxiety and stress levels. And these methods can include reading a book, you know, having a, a spa day at home or doing some meditation, taking a walk, you know, any activity that you can engage in that um, you find enjoyable. You know, anything that helps reduce anxiety and stress levels is a, a relaxation method. So um, avoidance. 
want to talk to you just a little bit about avoidance. Avoidance ties in with that distraction method that we just um, talked briefly about. If you are actively on social media or binge watching shows, then in the moment you are experiencing a experiencing a, a brief relief from your problems because you aren't paying attention to it. However, the moment that you stop using your distraction methods, you will realize that it is a lot harder to avoid your problems. Avoidance um, doesn't have to be in the form of watching TV or you know scrolling through social media. Actively daydreaming is also a form of avoidance. And it sometimes you know, and it's some something both adults and, and children do quite often. And I know that I do that, you know, sometimes myself <laughs> um, quite often. And these avoidance techniques often make it difficult for an individual to practice healthy coping skills. However, the quicker you are able to, um, however, the quick the quicker you are. Um, able to recognize that you are using an avoidance technique, the easier it will be to try using a relaxation technique. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, you know, great, but what can I do to help myself? You know, um, I've compiled some simple proven coping skills that anyone can do almost anywhere, you know, and also these skills can be personalized to fit your needs. You know, the first um, is, is breathing. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've all been told to take deep breaths, to calm yourself down. And, and yes, that, that absolutely works. However, it's important to know how to breathe properly. For example, um, most deep breaths um, look like this, you know, with my chest, you know, kind of inhaling and maybe my shoulders, you know, are moving up a, a little bit. And that actually makes us more anxious as, you know, those breaths are, we're taking shallow breaths when we're doing that. Instead, it's imperative to breathe from um, our diaphragm. And I'll show you how, you know, you can put your, your hand on your belly and think of it as um, inflating a balloon, you know? So you wanna push your stomach out as you're inhaling and you can kind of notice the different, you know, you're breathing from your diaphragm and this allows you to slow your breathing your heart rate and maximize your oxygen intake. And you know, this form of um, breathing called diaphragmic um, breathing, you know, it takes practice, but you know, once you've practiced it and you get good at it, it, it really is worth it. And once you master um, breathing from your diaphragm, you know, this is a helpful pattern. You know, I like to call it the, um, the box breathing because of its shape. You can see here that you inhale for four seconds, hold for four, exhale for four seconds, and then hold for four. And the systematic um, pattern coupled with diaphragmic breathing, meaning you know, expanding your, your belly as you're taking in a, a, a deep breath, slows um, your body's reaction to the stress and helps balance your brain. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, you know, it is a great strategy that can be done pretty much anywhere. And in the next slide, um, you know, I found this video as I was preparing for this presentation. I thought that it was a good guide and, and visual to give you um, an idea of how diaphragmic breathing works and, and how to do it probably explains it a lot better <laughs> than I do. So I'm gonna just play this, I think it's about two to three minute um, video just to kind of give you a demonstration of it. Belly breathing or the diaphragmatic breath is a technique used in almost all relaxation techniques. By breathing into the stomach, this signals a response in our body to relax and to calm down. I will note that we aren't actually breathing into the stomach, 
We're expanding the diaphragm, which pushes down and causes the stomach to naturally rise outwards. So with this technique, we'll be breathing down into the belly. It may be helpful to place one of your hands on your stomach to really feel that rising and falling in the stomach. And as we breathe in, we're breathing in through the nose, pushing the belly outwards with the breath. And on the exhale, we're breathing out through the mouth, drawing the belly inwards. Let's try this breath together and see if you can breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly, really feeling that expanding and contracting of the stomach. If you're new to this exercise, lying down is a great position to start in. So we'll just begin by noticing the breath then gently observing each inhale and each exhale. And then bringing the focus to the stomach, resting a hand on the stomach if that's helpful. And just breathing in slowly down into the belly. And then exhaling out through the mouth. Again, breathing in through the nose, filling the belly. And then letting everything go out through the mouth. One last time, breathing in, filling the lungs and expanding the belly. And then exhaling, letting everything go out through the mouth. Belly breathing is so simple and that's why I love it. You can do it whenever you want for however long you need. It can be really helpful in redirecting your thoughts or also when you need to take a mindful break. I like to use this at the beginning of my sitting meditation practice, taking five or 10 deep breaths before I settle in. And you can really feel the mind starting to slow down with each and every breath. Okay, so I, I hope that video was helpful. And I felt that, you know, having that demonstration, you know, you would probably get more out of it than me trying <laughs> to, to explain it. But, you know, a, another great way, you know, to shift our brain from the emotional right to the uh, logical left is also grounding, you know, ourselves. As I mentioned, um, when we feel stressed, it is easy to lose ourselves, you know, focusing only on the stressor. If you find yourself doing this, you should pause and take a moment to ground yourself. And, you know, here on the screen, you know, is this, um, a simple way. You know, first, um, you want to take note of what are the five things you can see, you know, and these do not need to be important or uh, noteworthy. You know, um, it can be the side of your computer, a pen, a coffee mug, you know, etc. cetera, whatever is around you. Then next, what are the four things that you can feel? And, you know, for example, you know, you can concentrate on, you know, I feel my shirt, you know, I feel um, my shirt touching my neck. I feel the socks on my feet. You know, I feel the desk under my arms. Then you wanna work your way through, you know, things you can hear. So you wanna take note of, you know, just three different sounds that you know you can hear around you. Next, you want to um, do two things that you can smell and you know taste. Again, the systematic approach allows your brain to balance out. You know, couple with this with the breathing exercises, and your body and mind can feel re relaxed. And again, with the things that um, you know, the two things I can smell, the one thing I can taste. You know, some people will say, "Oh, you know, I, I can't smell or taste anything." And if that is the case, then you can think about you know two of your favorite foods. You know, that 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 you have um, the taste for, or you know, a, a smell that. Um, that you like, you know, whether it's lavender or vanilla. So if you can't, you know, taste or smell anything in the air or around you, you can imagine, you know, your favorite scents or, you know, your the favorite um, taste of foods or, or fruit to help you with that. You know, also I should mention that you might think um, 
uh, might think that, you know, these take a lot of time, but, you know, these activities really don't take a lot of time and they're, you know, activity and um, stress reducing um, activities that you can do anywhere without um, many people noticing or anyone noticing. Now, safe place, you know, this is one of my, my favorite coping skills. It is similar to meditation, but it's more personalized. You know, I, I want to, I want you to imagine a place where you feel safe and it can be real, imaginary, it can be near, it can be a far away place. You know, a place um, you've only seen in pictures or a place you've been to, a place that you wish you were, was real. You know, with your eyes um, either open or closed, you know, choose, imagine that place in as much detail as you can. You know, what can you see? What do you hear there? What do you smell there, taste or, or, or feel? You know, be aware of what are you wearing? You know, are you eating or drinking anything? Do you have anything with you? You know, is a person with you? You know, allow yourself to vividly imagine that you are in this safe place and stay there as long as you need to. You know, again, practicing this with the diaphragmic breathing um, and you should feel yourself calming down. And I, to the slide, I added a few um, examples of common safe places. You know, many people love the beach, you know, the sound of the waves, the smell of the salt, the, the feel of the sun and the sand, you know, maybe, you know, a, a safe place for someone, um, you know, can be a, a dark, rainy, chilly forest, you know, for others and children um, a lot, their safe place might be their bedroom or their grandparents' house, you know, after you're fully flushed out the site, the, the safe place uh, in your mind, it becomes easier to go there when you are feeling stress. And, you know, a, a tip is, you know, playing music in the background or having nature sounds, you know, as you imagine your safe place, it really helps you to, to be able to go there mentally. Other coping strategies can include um, getting creative. You know, if you are someone who likes to draw or, or paint, then you can let out, you know, all your anxiety or stress through your art. If you are someone who likes to sing or, or dance, then you can allow yourself to, to feel free, you know, to do those things. You can sway to the music or, or you know, sing your, your, your heart out, you know, whichever you feel more comfortable with. And I know some people like to play their instruments and, and let out their frustration through, through music. You can do all sorts of creative things. And, you know, creatively, creativity looks different, um, you know, for everyone. But as long as what you are doing is helping you to feel at ease and is reducing your anxiety and stress levels, then I re recommend sticking to it. Another thing that, um, that helps reduce anxiety and stress are, are fidgets. And, you know, I just, not recently, but over, you know, like the last two years, I've really become um, familiar with uh, fidget gadgets. Some people have um, to feel things in order to help calm themselves down and fidgets are perfect for that. You know, this little guy over here on the side, this uh, gray guy that has uh, worry, you know, worry on it. He's actually an aromatherapy toy that can be used by both adults and children. And this specific aromatherapy toy, um, I believe it smells like lavender. It feels fuzzy and it's squishy. You know, there are so many other different types of aromatherapy toys that, um, or um, items that uh, can be found um, and you can use. You know, some kids and even adults like to use the, the poppets which doesn't make a lot of noise. And these pop it, it's kind of like um, having silent bubble wrap. And it is meant to help the user to feel at ease. Um, we have the classic stress ball, which can be uh, 
pretty much um, used everywhere and anywhere. And then finally, we have the Q fidget, which can be used by adults and children alike. And each side has a different feel to it. And, and this one can be used pretty much, you know, everywhere as well. And these are only a few fidgets, um, but there are so many more that can be found online or at stores that can be, you know, utilized when you're feeling anxiety and stress to, um, as a source to, to help calm you. Now, you know, I wanted to, we went over the diaphragmic uh, breathing and um, you were able to get a demonstration through the video, but I wanted to do sort of like um, a five minute meditation with you. You know, you know I know it's kind of um, early in the morning. So to kind of help get your day started so that you can, you know, feel relaxed and, you know, hopefully stress-free as you move on with the day. Hey there, and thanks for gifting yourself these next few minutes. It's important to remember that you're a priority, and allowing yourself even just a few short minutes of intentional reflection can really have a positive impact on the rest of your day. So let's use these next few minutes to come back to center and set an intention for the rest of your day. Move into a comfortable position, whether you're seated at your desk at work or laying on the couch at home, and gently close your eyes and shift all of your attention onto your breathing, taking slower, deeper breaths than you've taken all day so far, taking a deep breath in through your nose and slowly letting it out through your mouth. And continuing to breathe that way, feeling your lungs expand out as you inhale and contract back in as you exhale. Tune into your body, noticing how it feels, noticing if there's anything that it's trying to tell you. Notice any place of tension or tightness in your body. And give those areas permission to relax, sending love into those areas. Thank your body for taking such good care of you and let it know that it's okay to rest and relax for these next few minutes. You may notice that your mind starts to wander off. That's okay, that's natural. Just notice it and bring your attention back to your body using your breath as your anchor. Try to picture one thing that's happened today that's made you smile or made you thankful or appreciative. And just let that feeling fill you up for a moment. Breathe that feeling in from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And allow yourself to smile if that feels natural. Now focus on something that you can do today whether it's for yourself or for someone else, that will allow you to continue feeling this way. It could be something as small as deciding to go to bed early tonight so that you have time to finally read that book that's been on your bedside table, or the joy of getting dinner with a close friend. What's one little thing you can plan for your day to bring that intentional joy to it? Now just focus on that for a few minutes. Sit in that feeling of joy and peace.
And now let's take a few more deep breaths together. A deep breath in, feeling your lungs expand out as you inhale, and everything contract back in as you exhale. Again, an even deeper breath than the one before it, holding that breath for a beat and exhaling everything out. Last time, your deepest breath yet, sending that breath through your entire body. And exhale it out. And in your own time, slowly bring your awareness back to where you are. And thank yourself for taking these few minutes to just be intentional and kind to yourself. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, so I, I hope you're feeling a little <laughs> relaxed now, but this is another technique that you, you know, can use meditation as a way to reduce anxiety and stress. Um, on this slide, you know, these are just a couple of resources um, that are available to, you know, use if you feel as if um, you need more guidance or you need to talk to someone um, for support you know, as a way of self-care um, for, for kids, you know, there's communities and schools. There's also the um, T-Chat program, which, um, you know, uh, kids and, and adolescents uh, can be referred to. And through the counselors in the school, we do an intake and assessment, find out what the presenting um, problems or issues are. We um, typically have four or more sessions with the child, you know, in order to work on whatever it is that their goal is during that um, session. And then, you know, once, um, once we've completed the goals, if, you know, we feel, if the child feels that they would like to continue to talk to someone in, you know, um, addition to the family member, there is the potential for us to make uh, community um, referrals for the child to continue with their um with their sessions there's also pillar uh there's the border region behavioral health center there's scan uh gateway community clinic and also the uh, national alliance on mental health and um illness in in laredo so these are just a few of uh, potential resources that are out there in addition to using the uh the, the coping skills and techniques so this brings us to the end of the presentation. And, you know, I want to thank you all for joining me this morning and, you know, allowing me to um, talk to you a little bit about anxiety and, and stress and just some different techniques that you, you can use to help alleviate those symptoms. So I'm going to open it up. It looks like we're you have at least, you know, 13 minutes left. <laughs> so if yes. there are, you know, any questions, you know, um, or comments, you know, please, please feel free to share. If not, I guess you'll get 13 minutes back to your day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Darnay, thank you so much. We have, I've been looking at the comments on the chat. It was very helpful to a lot of parents and, and, and people that are on watching us this morning. So thank you. Parents, this is for you, for your children, counselors. This is for you to take back and work on with your students. And I, I thank you, Darnay, for providing those resources at the end of, of the presentation. Um, parents, this has been recorded and it will be on our UISD.net website under guidance and counseling, but it does take a few uh, days to upload and, and have there. Uh, we wanna be able to provide you with these skills um, so that you in turn can help us with your children at home. Uh, I do wanna thank everyone for logging on. My name is Melissa Ramirez, Director of Guidance and Counseling, and we are very fortunate to have this collaborative with uh, UTRGV when, and Darnay Cooley uh, presenting this morning. 
So once again, Garnet, um, thank you so very much for your time. And of course, for your knowledge and what you presented here this morning. Parents uh, that are on, uh, if you have any questions, like Garnet said, we also have a memorandum of understanding uh, with UTRGV and all of our campuses at UISD have been onboarded for TCHAT, which is telehealth. And you could go through your counselor uh, for referral. So reach out to your counselors because all of our schools here at UISD have already been trained. All of our counselors at all of our schools here at UISD have been trained. Um, so thank you so much, parents. Um, and Darnay, thank you again. Parents, everyone mm -hmm. on, please try to um, log on to the um, sign-in sheet. And even if you don't have a, stu a child in the district, just sign on. We had about 114 stu uh, people on this morning, Darnay. So thank you so much. Very impactful. Thank you so much. And it was great being here with all of you um, this morning. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and